everyone, it's Derek here from Adumed. Today we will be covering acute coronary syndrome. Stable angina will be covered in a separate video. So let's dive straight in. ACS can be split into three categories, unstable angina and an enstemy. So these two occur when there's a partial blockage of a coronary artery. Lastly, STEMI, which occurs when there's a complete blockage of a coronary artery. Patients presenting with cardiac chest pain can be managed based on the time of presentation. If seen with current chest pain or chest pain in the past 12 hours, then this will be an emergency admission via an ambulance. Cardiac chest pain at 12 to 72 hours will be referred for same day hospital assessment. Chest pain more than 72 hours ago with no complications such as pulmonary edema will require a detailed clinical assessment and strict safety netting. A lot of these patients will have GTN whilst awaiting input from a rapid access chest pain clinic within two weeks. When a patient is discharged following acute hospital management for ACS, we then take on our role as GPs. This is a two-step approach. Firstly, we look into cardiac rehab. Secondly, we look into secondary prevention medications. So, starting off with cardiac rehab, lifestyle advice is important. A Mediterranean-style diet is advised. Alcohol intake should be kept to less than 14 units, and omega-3 supplements are not routinely recommended. When advising about physical activity, this should also be encouraged, but within reason, and only to the point of slight breathlessness. Current guidance suggests 20 to 30 minutes daily. We also need to encourage smoking cessation. Part of cardiac rehab is also to give patients information about the disease, financial support, driving, and also advice about sexual intercourse. Current guidance states that normal sexual activity can be resumed usually four weeks after an uncomplicated MI. We can also look into secondary prevention in ACS. ACE inhibitors are to be used lifelong in these patients. Beta blockers are used lifelong, but only if there's a reduced left ventricular ejection fraction. If there's a normal ejection fraction, then these can be stopped after 12 months. If beta blockers are contraindicated, a rate limiting calcium channel blocker can be used instead. For example, diltiazem and verapamil. Antiplatelets are also important secondary prevention medications. Aspirin is used for life and a second agent can be used for up to 12 months. In general, the second agent tends to be prosugral if the patient has had a PCI or ticagrelor if they haven't. Don't forget to offer a PPI to these patients. Last but not least, statins are to be prescribed at a high dose of atorvastatin 80 milligrams. This dose is reduced to atorvastatin 20 milligrams only if there is evidence of CKD with an ACR of three or more plus an EGFR of less than 60. So thanks for watching this video. If you found this helpful and would like to watch more videos like this, feel free to like, comment and subscribe as this will really help my channel to grow.